Hey YouTube, it's your girl Memoirs of a Durandor and I am here to give you the tea on what they do not tell you in the Dominican Republic about your BBL, muscle repair, tummy tuck, and lipo. Okay, so I just got out of surgery. Trust me, I know there's quite a few videos on the secrets they don't tell you, but this will expose a lot more secrets that I personally found out. So stay tuned and you're gonna know from a person that does speak Spanish that investigated this subject three years. Let's get into it. Okay, I gotta put my glasses on y'all because this is getting serious. I got my notes, okay? I'm three months post-op, three months and three days, I believe. So let's just get right into it. Very first thing, and I'm just gonna read it. You can't wipe your own, I don't, can I say the word? Just be prepared that you're not gonna be able to wipe like, you know, like normal, normal people. It just ain't happening. You can't, you can't really bend over, it's so uncomfortable. And you I mean, you are hunched over, cause I thought, well, oh, hunched over, why would that make a difference? But it does. When you're chopped in the middle and you've had that muscle repair, for some reason you just can't reach back there. It might also have to do with a little bit of the arm lipo. I got a little bit, she only did the like here. It kind of looks funny, but I am happy with my results. Let me just make that clear. It's hard because, you know, your butt is so big and it's like together. So if your butt was kind of small or average, you might not be used to it being like stuck together, you know, opens easily. It's hard to get your hand up in there because it actually has to go in the cheeks, okay? So that is one of the biggest differences. And then just reaching behind you, I think it was the arm lipo. It might've been a combination of the arm lipo and the muscle repair and the you know, lipo on the sides. I don't know what it was that was preventing me from reaching the inside of my ass, but something was preventing that. Okay, okay, let's move on. Just so you know, someone's gonna have to clean your ass you will probably want four to five large packs of baby wipes. So I didn't really understand why baby wipes. It's because if somebody else cleaning your ass, you don't want them using toilet paper because you don't even know if they're gonna get it clean. With the wipes, you know for sure. I mean, it just, you can feel the cleanliness, right? Wipes, definitely wipes. And that is the reason, because I didn't understand why do we need wipes? Like I was just like, I didn't even take any. I was, yeah, I had to buy some when I got there. So take the wipes from here, from the United States or wherever you live. If your wipes are good quality, take them. They'll probably, probably be about the same price. You could buy them there, but I believe the quality of the wipes was higher, you know, is higher in the United States. Another tip that you'll need to know. So, I mean, you're gonna lose all of your vergüenza. So that's a Spanish word. That means like, you are not gonna be embarrassed. You might be embarrassed the first time, girl, but they are gonna see your ass, okay? The nurses, I recommend you have a nurse that's really nice. Okay, and someone you trust. Um, I don't know if you should bring a family member because <laughs> they gonna have that picture in their mind. Wheelchair people. You may have two to three people. So this is when you're coming home. And I did not know this. I knew I was gonna have a wheelchair because I did book it because it was, you know, from my investigating, it was better to have a wheelchair. Some doctors say, don't, it's bad for blood clots. Cause you'll be getting tired from very minor things. So having the opportunity to have the wheelchair is good. So that you don't have to be standing, you know, like hunched over like, shit, where am I gonna get on this plane? Or somebody don't wanna let you sit, you know, you need to sit. So that's just a, you know, portable chair for you. But the people, let me tell you, I ran out of money. I ran out of money. And that was not a good thing. Cause when I ran out of cash money, Man, that's a whole other video too. So I ran out of cash because I tipped everybody at the at the recovery house. The people at the airport that were wheeling me, there was like, you know, two to three people might wheel you in an airport. They were so rude because the very first person, no, actually even including the luggage guy was wanting a tip. I think my Uber driver pulled it out and put it on the cart, but the guy pushed the cart and he wanted a tip. And I didn't have no tip money. I was so embarrassed. I was like, God bless you, you know, blessing. It's so, I know, I, I'm so bad. I would like the blessing is worth more than the money I could give you because I don't have any money because I gave every last penny to my nurses because I wasn't expecting to have to give any more cash out, right? And he was pissed. I just felt 
like worthless at that point. Wheelchair girl gets me and I'm like, oh, she's so sweet. She's a young girl. Oh, thank God. No, no, no. <laughs> Those people definitely want their tip money too. She wheeled me over to this place automatically. And all the while you're being wheeled, you feel like they want to push you off of a cliff. Because the moment I told her I ran out of money, a whole change of attitude came. If I, okay, a tip. If you don't want to tip them, do not tell them you do not have money to tip them until the end. And she took me to this place to withdraw money and shit. My account was like so low from my surgery costs and everything. And they said that I had to pull out at least $200. And she looking at me like I'm some millionaire sitting there like I'm gonna pull out $200, please. Girl, you don't even know. Like this is the ghetto girl coming up into different life you know because i've been trying hard for three years it's like i'm so sorry I, I just can't i don't have that much in my account just know that you're gonna have maybe two to three people that you're gonna have to tip at the airport on your way back so however many layovers you have two to three people you need to have account for that what five dollars i don't know how much they tip shit that's still a lot of money they don't even want to ah, the lady didn't even want to move my luggage at the Atlanta airport, she's like, I can't touch your luggage. I was two weeks post off from a muscle repair from a very intense surgery where I thought I was gonna die. She would not touch my luggage. So luckily, you know, I speak Spanish. So a lot of those passengers were getting their luggage too because it's international travel. So you, when you go from Dominican, even if you have a layover, you have to collect your bags and put them into the next um, airplane. You have to, or give them to the next attendant or whatever. I'm in a freaking wheelchair and the lady won't even help me. <laughs> she literally told me, cause I had told her I didn't have no money cause I, and I felt so bad. And I thought since she was American, she would understand. No, it don't matter where they from. If you ain't got no money, they don't care about you. Sad as it is. And there may be an exception cause there was a lady after that. She like dropped me off with some other lady and she was so nice. She was so nice. And I told her how bad I felt and she was so sweet to me. It was like she was a sister. I had to translate in Spanish. I had like two bags, two really heavy bags. And what, the guy, he was there and I was like, ¿Me puedes ayudar? Es que la señora no me puede ayudar con mi maleta. She can't help me with my bag. So he, he did and he was with his girl and I thought she would be mad or something, but she was all cool with it. And he pulled my luggage off of there, but then he left and then I had another bag and then I had to ask somebody else for help. And they helped me without any hesitation. The nicest people, we're coming from Dominican Republic, thank God. And then she made me push the cart and I had to squeeze it so it would go while I was in the wheelchair. And you know, when you turn, it's just real awkward. I felt like I was about to fall over half the time, but thank God she wasn't too, you know, pissed, I guess. I don't know, she could have like made me fall, but she didn't, thank God. Just have that tip money because that will really save you, especially if you're, you know, just operating. You don't wanna be lifting heavy stuff. You don't realize that you need their help and that that's maybe the only money they make, but really, I didn't know that. I've never had to be in a wheelchair before. So very new experience. So these are kind of out of order. I'm gonna go to this one. I had an iPhone 14 when I got to Dominican Republic and unless anything has changed, the SIM is a, vir no, it hasn't changed. This is the model. The SIM is a virtual SIM. So those of you that have activated it probably already went through the headache of that with your carrier. When you get to Dominican Republic, you're gonna notice there is no signal. And even the Wi-Fi signal in the airport, it's just, it, I don't even think it worked at all for me. So you're going to have to get a SIM card. Now, when I had the, I had the iPhone 14, cause I just got it right before I went to get my surgery. I, I knew I had to get a SIM card at the Claro, cause they say Claro is the best, one of the best ones you can get, the service provider. So I went to the one in their airport and they could not activate it. And I was waiting in line for a long time. And so I could have saved maybe two hours of my life or an hour if I would have just gone to a Claro official store in the city somewhere. So looking that up, I, I don't know what the word is, official store, you know, location for their service so you need to go to one of those just get your you'll go to your airbnb or wherever check in or you can go there first but you're gonna have all your luggage so it's up to you if you want to get that first but it still took quite a bit of time 
when I got to the place, you have to take a number. It's kind of like the tag office um, or the old school tag office where you take a number and you wait your turn. And it was at least an, oh, I would say it was almost two hours before I got out of there. So be prepared for that, but you will need it because you will not have any service. You won't be able to do the Uber thing, nothing. You can't do anything. You can't make phone call, Uber, nothing. You have to get the number. And so you're getting a number from the Dominican Republic. When you get back to the United States, that's a whole other thing. You got to call your carrier and get that fixed back to your regular number. But you are not going to receive calls you know, make people aware of that, that you're just going to be gone for a temporary time. Next thing. Oh, and by the way, the service is not expensive. It's like what? 25, maybe $30. But if you have to make a lot of phone calls that can get expensive, especially when you're calling internationally, you have to keep refilling the card. So it's kind of like a prepay service. You prepay it and you use it. Okay. So that's how that works. And you have to refill it. My internet wasn't letting me um refill it for some reason on their website so i had to always go to a location to refill it or on a in a machine somewhere because they have like deposit machines it is real different if you're making an international call just fyi if the phone call takes too long and you'll run out of minutes which it does it uses more i don't know what the rate is it uses more minutes if you're calling internationally and when you have issues with your bank not giving you money you're using a lot of minutes and it will cut you off. You could have been on hold for 20 minutes and the person is about to get back with you and it cuts you off. You have to refill, recall, go through everything again. So just try to have everything in order. I told my bank I was gonna be gone. Y'all need to call PayPal because PayPal wasn't even wanting to do my payment. Now, my bank knew that I was going there because I told them, but for some reason PayPal wasn't allowing payments to go through because then I found a way to pay people through PayPal. So that's an, that's a helpful thing too. You have to refill that card if you're going to make another phone call. And how do you do that? Well, if you use your debit card or if they accept like a PayPal payment or something, and that's another advice, make sure PayPal, I don't even know if you could tell PayPal, but tell PayPal and tell whatever financial thing you use, um, bank or whatever, because you know, that $10,000 cash, my, probably won't last you very long when you're getting surgery. So the traffic, uh, need I say more? The traffic is terrible, terrible. So depending on the time of day, you know, a 25 minute drive um, could take like an hour and a half or two hours. You don't expect that when you're coming from a small city. So I'm coming from Wichita, Kansas, which is a teeny tiny little city. You know, five o'clock traffic is like, regular traffic in most big cities, right? So for me, you know, the longest it would take me to get one, one side to another, the maximum amount of traffic, maybe 30 minutes, maybe. No, probably not even that. 20 minutes, 25 on a really trafficy day. You can look on the map and it says like, you know, at one o'clock in the morning, you're going to bed and it's saying, oh, this drive was only 17 minutes. You get up in the morning and you put in your Uber app and it's saying like two hours, you know, just be aware of that because that could get you in trouble with your appointments and you don't want to, you don't want to make your doctors mad. Okay. And you don't want to make other people mad because I did that. I was doing that a lot. If you can stay at a recovery house that is the closest to where you're going to be having your surgery, it will be much better for you because sometimes if you have any complications, you're going to go back there. You're not going to go to just some random hospital. You're going to go back where they did the surgery. At least that's my case. That's what I did. And um, Dr. Adoran, and then they took care of me. I went back a few times actually. So advice, just get the, get the recovery house closest. I know I've heard of Metropolis being good. This recovery house or Dr. DR, I think it's called DR recovery house. Uh, Juan is amazing. He's such a nice guy. He really, um, worked with me and it was very patient and understanding of my situation. Um, they had to move me rooms and all kinds of things. And he was just overly kind. So uh, that's why I gave all my tip money away to all the workers too. Cause you know, one of those nurses Feel for that, but sorry, I'm rambling. Pain pump. Okay, the big question, the pain pump. 
Nobody knows if you're supposed to really get it or not. And they say, well, if you don't get it, you don't have to pay for it. But they ask you like during your consultation, right before you go into surgery and you're paying for everything, they're gonna ask you, do you want the pain pump or do you not want it? And then, you know, you're thinking like, well, you know, I could always get it later. If I really am in that much pain, I'll just ask for it. Let me tell you that it don't work like that, honey. If you go in there, okay, it does work like that, but it doesn't. And I'm gonna explain. If you don't get that 250, well, right now, I, I think it's around 250. So what it is, is they put an IV in your other hand, cause they're gonna put one for the surgery and one for the, I don't know what, well, anyway, when you go into surgery, they automatically need to put one. They're gonna put another one if you get the pain pump before you go in so that your necklace, that pain pump necklace will be attached. It's a little ball of medicine, cocktail. I don't know what it is, but trust me when I say I needed that pain pump. I needed that pain pump. And I know they say pain tolerance and all that, but I'm just saying, I needed it. Everybody is different, but I needed that pain pump. Put your head back, put your head back. Don't be lifting your head, because mm -hmm. you're gonna hurt even more, okay? If you cry, you're gonna get cellulite in that butt. Don't be crying. You're gonna get cellulite in that butt if you cry. My abs are I know, I know, don't. Well, because you keep lifting your head, don't lift your head, okay? Come on, put your hands down. Okay. And I am so glad that I told them um, right when I was going to surgery. So I regretted my decision that I did not want it at first. And so when I was going into the surgery, I was like, you know what? Just, just stick me, just do it and just give it to me. And so I had my, I had the needle already in my hand in my wrist and they still took like a few hours to give it to me even though I was prepped, all they needed to do was connect it. That's it. So for them to have taken like, I don't know, it was two to four hours. I can't remember, man, cause that uh, anesthesia thing. It does not take away all the pain and discomfort. What the pain pump did for me was make it to where it was bearable because it was so much pain that I, I couldn't even think right. I couldn't even like, I, there's no words to explain the pain. Pain mostly for me was the muscle repair and just the abdomen. Oh. So I didn't even like, I don't even feel like I really felt the lipo. It was burning like I could feel my arms burning a little bit, but it wasn't as bad as the muscle repair, man. That muscle repair felt like the tightest corset you ever wore in your life. Metal, squeeze as tight as you possibly could squeeze it. Um, that's the only way I can describe it. And I thought it was the thing they put around my stomach. I guess they put like cloth and then they tape it around your stomach to hold you in after your surgery. I thought, I thought that that was the reason that I was in so much pain. So I would put my finger in there like, oh, I can't breathe. No, baby, that's the inflammation, the swelling, your organs being squished from the muscle repair and your, your tummy being pulled down and sewed. And I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to tell you. And it may have also been intensified the fact that I did not sleep. And that's a whole other video, but it's another point. Get your sleep. Do not not sleep. Do not take a, f <laughs> sorry Nelly, but do not take a friend with you that you know is not gonna let you sleep. And if you do take one of those, you let them have their own room, <laughs> okay? If you're staying at an Airbnb like before, a few days before to get your labs done, you let them have their own room because if they're crazy, they ain't gonna let you sleep, okay? So, and you need sleep because when you get out of that surgery, you ain't gonna sleep. So if you're already like, you've been up for three days straight because this person trying to have fun, it's not gonna be good for your recovery. So I have a feeling that that contributed to my discomfort and my exhaustion, it was just not good. So get your sleep. If you're bringing someone that's loud and crazy and probably won't let you sleep, or you have doubts in your mind, make sure they have their own room. Yeah, this is getting intense. 
So, oh, and the pain pump. Definitely recommend from me. Again, you can do it. My other friend, she was regretting her decision. She got operated the same day. She's from Australia. And she was highly regretting not getting it because they kept telling her, oh, it'll be okay, you'll be okay, it'll get better, it'll get better. They didn't want to even stick her because she didn't get the IV yet. She was like, no, I'm not going to do it unless I really need it. I regretted it the last minute right before they wheeled me in. So I was like, poke me. Just tell them you want it. Just get it. Just get it. You're going to be in pain. But she, when she finally got it, because they waited like the whole night and like the whole day until we were released to give it to her. And then she just was like, and oh, she was so happy when she got it. And I know, because <laughs> I was in that pain just a few hours, I couldn't take it. Overnight nurses, let's talk about this. You want to get a good one because you're going to be in such a vulnerable state. You're coming out of anesthesia and I really didn't know how that was. Like I've never put, put to sleep for any kind of surgery in my life. And even when I had my C-sections, like this was so different. Like there was times when I said stuff I didn't even know I was saying and people and my friend recorded me. You want someone there that you can trust. If you can bring a family member instead, I would highly recommend it. If you do not have a family member, make sure that your overnight nurse is highly recommended by several people. It's really the only way to know for sure. If you can't bring someone, you want them highly recommended because they're gonna make sure you're in the right position. They're gonna have care and compassion for you. They're gonna not treat you like a number. A lot of those nurses out there, all they see is a dollar sign when they see you. You don't want to be a dollar sign and you could just die and they just, oh, well, she died. No problem. You know, doctor's fault, I guess. No, you want someone to watch your monitor. You want them knowing, you know, the blood pressure. You want them knowing that they have their title or their diploma for being um, a nurse and everything. You can even ask for that. But I would go off of just the reviews of other people because those are, you know, experiences that they've had. And if they think it's good, I had a really decent one. She was really nice. And a girl in the same room with me had a, I don't wanna say it, but she had a nurse that was not. I mean, she was making jokes about inappropriate things. I don't know about you, but when I'm in that kind of pain, I don't want to be joking. I don't want people joking around, laughing, like playing on their phone and stuff. I want them monitoring me. I want them changing out my catheter and or my pee. You know, you want them doing their job. She had her and I almost got her. Thank the Lord. I did not. Oh, thank God. But she was in there with me and I just seen how she was treating her. And it made me mad and she wasn't even my nurse. So... <laughs> Do not go to a random massage therapist before your surgery. Hey, surgery sisters, congratulations. You made it to the end of the video. If you found this information helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Put down in the comment box whatever it is you may have a question about or something that didn't make sense to you or whatever it is, or maybe it's a video you want to see in the future about the healing and recovery process. I plan to come up with my own subjects um, as far as that recovery process goes and to put out more videos. So hit the subscribe button. That way you can get those first thing and you can be on top of your recovery and on your way to a better life because this is life changing. Have a great journey dolls. Bye-bye.